So, uh, let's jump in here. Um, we had just got done with the sorcerer, who was completely revamped to use basically mana points, like a Final Fantasy character, instead of spell slots. I'm very excited to see what sort of changes they have in store for the Warlock. Alright. So, uh, the Warlock has slot levels. Okay. They've got spells known, and they've got spell slots. So they're not going to be using mana points. They're going to be using Warlock slots. And that's fine. Uh, they've got invocations, which they've always had. And they've got their cantrips. It doesn't look like anything shockingly new has been added. Um, let's see. They get intelligence saving throws instead of charisma saving throws. That's because a Giphy Glyph Warlock operates off of intelligence instead of charisma. Because we already have two charisma casters and uh, a charisma half caster in the Paladin. So we don't need any more charisma casters. Please stop. There's too many charisma casters. Now people are like, hey, that doesn't make sense. Intelligence, what are you doing? My, my charismatic warlock. They're getting their sugar daddy mama to give them spells. Look, um, a lot of this goes back to the earlier playtest when it was still D&D &D Next and it wasn't D&D uh, &D 5th Edition and uh, Intelligence for Warlocks was a thing. They were going to make it Charisma or Intelligence and they thought that'd be too complicated. Um, there's not enough stuff that uses Intelligence and this system doesn't support Artificers, so might as well have Intelligence-based Warlocks. Alright, so we got the Intelligence thing out of the way. Let's keep going. Um, otherworldly Patron. Choose an Otherworldly Patron. You gain features from your Otherworldly Patron at 1st, 2nd, 6th, and 10th level. Each Patron has a set of three guiding agendas. It's demands. Oh, some more role-playing mechanics. That'll be nice. Just like the Cleric, the Paladin, the Bard. Am I forgetting one? I don't know. Um, if you make a notable sacrifice in the service of a demand, your Patron may... Bless you with Eldric Favor. You can hold a maximum number of Eldric Favors at one time equal to your Intelligence modifier. On your turn as a free action, you may spend one Eldric Favor to do one of the following, just like the other classes. Um, which is cool. Be rewarded for role-playing uh, restrictions. Transgression. If you piss off your patron, there's actually going to be consequences to it. Hmm. Well, that screws almost every Warlock I've ever run D&D for. Cool. Um, all right. Penance. If you have transgressed, you will have to perform a penance to regain your patron's favor. Uh, this is all uh, copy pasta from the other ones, but you know, you adapt to whatever you need to be. Okay. Patron spells. Uh, these are added to your uh, list uh, that you can learn. Okay. So these aren't added directly in this version. They're just added to the list of world spells you can learn. In the Darker Dungeons patch, they just give you extra spells. But here, I guess the whole class is better balanced. Or, you know, we'll see. Pact Boon. To mark the initiation of your Pact Bargain, you're rewarded with a boon from your patron, an Eldritch weapon, a Book of Forbidden Secrets, a trinket that summons a bound familiar, a wand of destructive power, etc., you may choose one boon from the list of packed boons. Spellcasting focus. For as long as you are holding or wearing it, your packed boon acts as a spellcasting focus for your warlock spells. Packed magic. Two cantrips. Learn some more cantrips. Replace those cantrips when you level up. Spell slots. Uh, warlock table shows how many spell slots you have. The table also shows what the level of those spell slots is. All of your spell slots are the same level. To cast one of your Warlock spells a first level or higher, you must expend a spell slot. You regain all expended spell slots when you finish a long rest. For example, when you are fifth level, you have two third level spell slots. To cast the first level spell Thunder Wave, you must spend one of those slots, so you might as well cast it as a third level spell. Spells known of first level and higher. Uh, you can learn new spells from the new Warlock spells list. When you reach 6th level, for example, you learn a new Warlock spell, which can be 1st, 2nd, or 3rd level. That's pretty cool. Uh, it's based on your maximum slot level. Uh, you can replace spells one for one when you level up. Uh, it can't be any higher than your maximum slot level. You're going to use Intelligence for your spells. 
uh, your arcane focus or your packed boon item as a spell casting focus. Uh, this is important because these focuses can get damaged by dangerous magic rules. Eldritch versatility. When you finish a long rest, you may replace one of your known warlock spells, including cantrips, with another spell from the warlock list. Very generous. Sacrificial bargain. This is where it gets kind of Worlds of Warcrafty. I heard. When you cast a Warlock spell of first level or higher, you may spend a number of hit die equal to your Warlock spell level to cast the spell without expending a spell slot. If the spell can't be cast at a higher level, you may instead spend a number of hit die equal to the spell's maximum casting level. You can use this feature up to three times. You regain expended uses when you finish a long rest. That's pretty damn cool. Because you don't know when your next long rest is going to come, but you get a short rest you know, whenever you can carve one out. Um, but you can only do it three times, so eventually you'll run out. Uh, also, hit dice are not as easy to get back as, as you might think. Um, Eldritch Invocations. You gain two Eldritch Invocations of your choice. When you gain certain Warlock levels, you gain additional Invocations of your choice, as shown in the Invocations Known Column. When you gain a level in this class, you can choose one of the invocations you know and replace it with another invocation that you could learn at that level. You can gain access to six, wow, unique invocations from your otherworldly patron and add these to your options. Mystic Arcanum. Uh, you gain a spell of formidable power from your patron. Choose one of the following Mystic Arcanum. You may cast your Mystic Arcanum as a six level spell. Oh shit, that's the new ninth level. Without expending a spell slot or material components, you can't do so again until you finish a long rest. What do we got here? Soul Cage. Holy shit. Uh, Magic Jar. Conjure Fae. Now, this is an arcane gate. These are some pretty good spells in here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, here's the new spell list, basically to keep bards from being jerks. All right. Otherworldly Patrons. You made a pact with an otherworldly patron... Are we doing invocations at the end? I guess we're doing invocations at the end. Um, the only one that they have is the Fiend. You gotta, we gotta get the Arch Fey, the Great Old One, the Greater Dead. Uh, blah blah blah. All right. When you create your own patron, add three demands. Add some patron spells. Add a first level feature. Come up with six invocations and give them some sixth, sixth and tenth level abilities. Tenth level abilities. That's a weird flex. Okay. Um, you have made a pact with a fiend from the lower planes of existence, a being whose aims are evil, even if you yourself struggle against those aims. Fiends seek to corrupt, dominate, and destroy all things, including you. Uh, the fiend has an agenda in your world, and you are a small piece of it. To be worthy of your patron's power, you must honor their demands. Worship no other. Seek power and position. Convert or control. Alright, it's going to be problematic with their default cleric and paladin. Uh, for sure. Uh, patron spells. Uh, they give you uh, these spells, which, of course, there are no 7th and ninth level spells, so just ignore them. Uh, Dark One's Blessing. When you reduce a hostile creature to 0 hit points, you gain temporary hit points equal to your intelligence modifier plus your warlock level. Uh, patron Invocations. You can choose Devil's Flock at 7th level. Dominate Beast without expending a spell slot. Only once per long rest. Harsh. Fiendish Flesh, 9th level. You can spend one hit die to cast Investiture of Flame without expending a spell slot. This person, uh, Giffy Glyph, really liked this Investiture spell. Uh, this was used with the Sorcerer as well. And I think with the Monk. Um, Elemental Monk. You can't do so again until you finish a long rest. Uh, Fiendish Senses, you can cast Detect Evil and Detect Good at will without expending a spell slot. That's pretty cool. Fiery Tongue. You know how to get people to do what you want. You gain proficiency in Intimidation and Persuasion. Hell's Quarrel. You can cast Flame Arrows without expending a spell slot. You can't do so again until you finish the long rest. Hmm. Hellish Companion. You can cast Infernal Calling without expending a spell slot. You can't do so again until you finish a long rest. Okay, limited mileage for sure on these. Uh, but we are trying to make it a lower magic setting with these rules, so... Uh, Dark One's Own Luck. When you make an ability check saving throw, you can add a d10 to your roll. Uh, you can do so after seeing the initial roll, but before any of the roll's effects occur. You can use this feature up to three times. You regain expended uses when you finish a long rest. And Fiendish Resistance. Choose one type of damage when you finish a short or long rest. Ooh, that's nice. Anything with short rest in the system is pretty generous. 
Uh, you gain resistance to that type of damage until you choose a different one from this feature. Damage from magical weapons or silver weapons ignores this resistance. Patron spells are warlock spells. Yeah. Um, and they're cast at whatever your spell level is at. All right, here's the Pact Boons. Uh, seeing as how 5e Warlock is what all these other classes are based on, let's hope that these are uh, beefy and wonderful. Pact of the Chain, Pact of the Blade, Pact of the Tome, and Pact of the Wand. All right, your Pact Boon artifact bears the unmistakable mark of your patron. Ain't no hiding that shit. Uh, sealing your pact. You gain your pact boon artifact once you seal your pact, traditionally by making a promise or sacrifice to your patron. Uh, I made a promise. Your promise should be achievable, narrow enough in scope that it can be reasonably addressed during gameplay. You made a sacrifice. You sacrifice something of great value to your patron. Describe how you sealed the pact with your patron or pick a random suggestion, if appropriate, from the promises and sacrifices table. Renewing your pack. If you lose your pack boon artifact, you can spend one point of Eldric favor and perform a one-hour ceremony to re uh, receive a replacement artifact from your patron. This ceremony can be performed during a long or short rest and destroys the previous boon item. So like losing your credit card. Um, a new seal. Depending on the circumstances in which you lost your artifact, your patron may demand that you renew your pact with a fresh seal. This may require you to make a new promise or sacrifice. Promises. I will visit the realm of Nazarun and burn the sacred book of ascension. Find a way to summon you into this world. Uh, free the dream stalker from the depths of the Feywitch prison. These are all amazing. This is a good table. It only goes up to 96. So I guess if you have a 97 or higher, you don't have to honor any promises. That's pretty cool or something. Uh, sacrifices. I will give you one of my eyes, my soul, my sense of aesthetics, my fingernails. Okay, those are less cool. Uh, creating a new pact boon. To create your own pact boon, pick a clear theme. Uh, for example, curse, destroy, protect, infiltrate, corrupt, control, art, music, immortality, blah, blah, blah. Uh, create a pact artifact. Uh, create pact features. Okay. Oh, man. It's a lot more work to make a warlock than it is to make a... Because uh, you got to have patron and you got to have pact. So those are two different things. Well, if you want to make up new ones. Okay. Pact of the Blade. This is designed to kill the Hexblade. Really? I find this to be... um, Like a really good... A really good addition to the rule set. I mean, I kind of feel like they should all just be played together, but that might just be me. Um, all right, Pact Weapon is designed to kill the Hexblade. Let's see what happens. Uh, you gain a unique Eldritch Weapon from your patron. This weapon is honed and shaped by your mind. The stronger your intellect, the sharper your blade. In addition, you gain proficiency with medium armor, shields, and martial weapons. Uh, you can spend one action to summon your Pact Weapon to your hand. You choose it in the form of a weapon it takes each time. A dagger, a sword, a bow, whatever you want, baby. Your weapon bears the almost legal mark of your patron. When you attack with this weapon, use intelligence instead of strength or dex for the attack and damage rolls. The weapon counts as magical for the purposes of overcoming resistance and immunity. The weapon disappears if you use this feature again, or if you die. That's interesting. Okay. A uh, greater packed weapon, starting at 5th level, you can attack with your pack weapon twice instead of once. Uh, so it's just like Darker Dungeons. It combines it all into one go. You can transform magic weapon into your packed weapon. It takes an hour to do so. Then you can summon and dismiss it. Uh, you can break the bond. It takes just as much time. Eldric Brand. Uh, you're able to mark a creature with your Eldric Brand. Oh, this is new. Uh, it does use concentration. It lasts for up to a minute. It only takes verbal components. When you hit a creature with your packed weapon, so technically it's got verbal and material, uh, you may choose to brand the creature and deal an extra 1d6 force damage uh, per your spell level slot. When a creature is branded, attacks with your pack weapon, deal extra force damage to the creature equal to your intelligence modifier. Wow. That's pretty cool. Um, okay. The creature also can't benefit from the invisible condition until the mark expires. You may use this feature a number of times equal to your intelligence modifier. Oh. Uh, or, and then you recover uses when you fish a long rest. 
Translocate. If your packed weapon is within 300 feet of you, you can spend a bonus action to teleport to its location. Oh, that's pretty cool. Or the nearest unoccupied space if that location is occupied. You can use this. You teleport to the weapon. It doesn't teleport to you. That's pretty cool. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your intelligence modifier if you regain any you regain expended uses when you fish a long rest. Banish. You are able to banish a creature to the realm of your patron. Uh, you can use this feature once, and then you have to long rest. Uh, all right. Banish. When you hit a creature with your packed weapon, you deal an extra 5d10 force damage. If the creature gets reduced to 50 hit points or less, it is banished to a demiplane controlled by your patron. Well, shit. No saving throw? While it is banished... The creature can make a saving throw at the end of each of its turns. If it succeeds or the duration expires, the creature reappears in the space it left. If it fails, it suffers 1d10 force damage. Oh, that's pretty cool. If the creature is reduced to zero hit points while it is banished, it does not return, and you regain one expended spell slot. That is awesome. Yeah, that's way... That's really cool. Alright. And for anybody that's wondering, does this mean you can't run a campaign past level 10? Um, you can. Once you get to level 10, you can then start taking levels in another class. Um, so you would, you would keep everything you had from your first class, and you would start gaining levels in another class. That's how they handle going above level 10 with this system. In case you were wondering. Uh, let's see. Pact of the Chain. You have a magic Pokemon. Um, a special trinket. It's a white and red ball with a button on it. It allows you to summon a familiar and bind it to your will. Um, a ring, a bracelet, a Pokeball, uh, whatever. Uh, it has the unmistakable mark of your master. Chain Master, when you take the attack action, you can forgo one of your own attacks to allow your familiar to spend its reaction to make one attack of its own. Uh, I remember, this trinket always summons the same familiar, same name, same memories, personality, etc., but you may, you may choose its form each time it is summoned. That's kind of dope. Your familiar has a personality of its own. It may or may not be happy to serve you, but whatever its attitude, the familiar must obey the command of whoever wears the trinket. Your familiar is shaped by your eldritch whims. At first level, choose one of the favored familiar options. Your familiar may take the form of a tiny creature that has A, the chosen type, and B, a maximum CR of 1 eighth. As you gain warlock levels, your familiar can take on more substantial and more powerful forms. Aberrations and beast, beast and fey, beast and fiends, and beast and undead. Okay, that's pretty cool. Familiar powers. Some familiars may have extremely powerful abilities that can be problematic if left unchecked. Gibbering Mouthers, Nothic Insight, Sea Hag, Death Glares. A familiar can't cast spells nor spawn copies of itself. In addition, the DM may, at their discretion, choose to fuel, limit, or void any ability they consider to be game breaking. Fuel. The familiar summoner must spend one spell slot each time the ability is used. Limit. This can only be used once, exp uh, regaining expended uses when the familiar is resummoned. The familiar can't use this ability. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. Hmm. All right. How do you summon it? Does it say how you summon it? Do you just use summon familiar? Like. Special trinket, um, while you're wearing it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can cast Find Familiar Spell as a ritual. Well, that seems kind of silly. If every time they can use the... Oh, once, and they got to resummon it. So it's more like a once-per-fight situation by, by limiting it. I get it. Okay. Um, mutations. Whenever you summon a familiar, you may choose one of the following mutations. Air is for the living, doesn't need to breathe, bound by blood. When your familiar is reduced to zero hit points, you can spend one hit die to reduce your... Familiar to one hit point instead. Your familiar gains a flying speed of 40. Shared power. If your familiar forces a creature to make a saving throw, it uses your spell DC. Silver claws. Uh, they are considered magical for the purposes of overcoming immunity and resistance. Under the sea, swimming speed of 40. But notice, not underwater breathing. Uh, familiar telepath. You can communicate telepathically with your familiar and perceive through your familiar senses as long as you are on the same plane of existence while perceiving through your familiar senses. You can speak through your familiar in your own voice, even if your familiar is normally incapable of speech. 
Uh, mutation Master, whenever you summon your familiar, you can choose two mutations to apply to it. And Chain Tyrant, you can spend your bonus action to command your familiar to make one attack. All right. Um, hmm. So technically, they can make two attacks per round because you can give up one of your attacks from your multi-attack or just give up your attack so we can attack and then it uses reaction to attack and then you use your bonus action to command it to attack. Okay. Um, all right. Pact of the Tome. Uh, you ask your patron for forbidden knowledge and are rewarded with a Tome of Eldritch Secrets. I've always held that this is the best uh, pact. Uh, well, at least before Hexblade came out. Um, let's see if it still is good. You gain a book of forbidden knowledge. When you find a ritual spell, you can add it to the spell book. Um, for each spell level, you add two hours and 50 GP and rare inks as needed to inscribe it. Uh, here's the stat block for a book of shadows. Um, choose one cantrip from any uh, class spell list. While the book is on your person, you can cast a cantrip as will. It doesn't count against your number of cantrips known. Forbidden ritual, choose one first level spell that has a ritual tag. The spell appears in the book and doesn't count against the number of spells you can own. While this book is in your hands, I think they kind of limited it, right? Because I thought you got like three cantrips or something crazy um, normally. Uh, let's see. Page of Eldritch Power. A new page appears in your Book of Shadows. A page of Eldritch Power. Choose a power from the list below. Adding names. Oh, Death Note. A creature may spend an action to write its true name on the page. The page contains a number of names equal to your intelligence modifier. Additional names or false names written on the page will fade after one minute. Removing names when you finish a long rest, you may touch one page of power from your Book of Shadows and magically erase any names of your choice. Destroying a page, the page naturally heals any damage to it. If the page is torn out, the page turns to ash. What is the benefit of writing a name in the book? I guess we'll cover that below. Oh, yeah. Uh, you can cast a sending spell, targeting a creature whose name is on the page, uh, without using the spell slot or without using material components. To do so, you must write the message on the page. The target hears the message in their mind, and if the target replies, the message appears on the page. That's some Harry Potter shit. Uh, your patron knows all. They're totally FBI agent, uh, your book. Okay. I kind of assume patrons are always doing that. Um, Deathly Note. When any creature whose name on the page is reduced to zero, but not outright killed, the creature magically drops to one hit point instead. Uh, once this magic is triggered, no creature can benefit from it until you finish the long rest. Uh, if the creature dies while their name is written on the page, their soul is claimed by your patron. Oh, shit. Um... <laughs> And you regain one expelled spell slot. Or expended spell slot. Oh my goodness. Um, I guess you leave that part out when you're trying to explain it to people. Oh, here we go. Add two additional cantrips and one additional first level spell at third level. So they kind of, because they gave it to you a little bit early, they give you the rest of it there. This formatting has really got me messed up with these example placeholders. All right. Uh, level 7, Focus Mind. While you are holding the Book of Shadows, you have an advantage on constitution saving throws you make to maintain your concentration on spell. That's pretty dope. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, that's true. Yeah, you could, uh, you could be like, hey, Mr. Goblin, what's your name? Oh, okay. Hold on. Alright, now kill him. Okay, kill him again. Alright. We're good. Yeah, I could definitely see some abuse there. Um... Archivist. I mean, this right here, in a game where you don't have feats, if you don't have feats available, this is huge. This is basically Warcaster. Um, your Book of Shadows gains another page of Eldritch Power. Choose a power. You may take the same option multiple times if you wish. Oh. That's pretty cool. Uh, Pact of the Wand. Ask your patron for the power to destroy, and you are rewarded with an Eldritch Wand of Devastation. A wand of Eldritch Power, this wand crackles with strange energy, blah blah blah. Alright, it's got a range of 120 feet, takes an action to use, VS, instantaneous, beam of crackling energy, uh, make a ranged uh, attack on a hit, they take 1d10 force damage. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Have they removed the Eldritch Blast cantrip, and the only way to get it is to, is to make it, is to take a magic wand? Is that what I'm reading here? Is that the only way to get the, uh, oh, wow. Mm, okay. Okay. 
<laughs> okay. Wow. While you're holding your packed one, you can guess it. I think Eldric Blast is good. Is it so good that it needs to be its own packed? Holy shit. Um, I mean, if it's not, every Hexblade just stops using their Hexblade and starts using Eldric Blast, if we're being honest, because it is that good. Um, all right. A Wand of Eldric Power. This one crackles, blah, blah, blah. You can cast Eldric Blast. Starting at third level, once per turn... Uh, when you would hit a creature... Wow, he did, did he even rewrite Eldric Blast? I want to hit this one, Neaton. Uh, once per turn, when you hit a creature with Eldric Blast, you can add your intelligence modifier. Uh, superior Eldric Blast, you can choose to attack two separate targets. Make, he really did. He nerfed the hell out of that shit. Okay. Um, wand powers. Choose one of the following wand powers. Whenever you finish a long rest, you may change your wand powers. Chilling Blast. Once per turn, when you hit a creature with Eldritch Blast, you can chill it, reducing its speed by 10 to a minimum of 5. Um, decaying Blast. Once per turn, when you hit a creature with Eldritch Blast, Lingering Decay. It can't regain hit points until the end of your next turn. Very good for regenerating bad guys, for sure. Um, grasping Blast. Uh, the creature 10 feet towards you in a straight line. Marking Blast. Um... They can't turn invisible. Repelling Blast, uh, 10 feet away from you in a straight line. I feel like, how many invisible creatures are you really dealing with that you would think it's a good idea to take Marking Blast? Like, you have to make this decision after a week of resting. Who Who is really going to be like, gotta watch out for all those invisible creatures? Hmm... Uh, Repelling Blast. I mean, if it was like Fairy Fire and it lit them up, I mean, that'd be cool. But all it does is just say that until the end of your next turn, they can't turn invisible. Marking Blast seems kind of shit compared to almost everything else we've read. Uh, once per turn, when you hit a creature, you can push it up to 10 feet away from you. Seeking Blast. Once per turn, when you attack a creature with other Blast, you can ignore half a three-quarters cover. That's pretty important since they got rid of the feats that allow you to do that. Shocking Blast, once per turn you hit a creature, it can't take reactions. Very good for getting your allies out of a bad situation. Greater Devastation, choose one additional wand power. Destruction, when you're holding the wand, you can spend an action to cast Destruction as a 5th level spell. When you use this feature once, you can regain expended uses when you finish a long rest. Destruction. Scattering beams of destructive force erupt from your wand. Each creature in a 60-foot cone. Oh my goodness. That's a big cone. Uh, okay. Uh, a creature takes 8d6 force damage. Holy shit. In a 60-foot cone. Uh, it is a dexterity save, at least. Uh, it, oh my. Any creature that is reduced to zero hit points by this spell is disintegrated. Whew. Holy shit. <laughs> so your patron just gives you a nuclear warhead. That's cool. Um. Oh, okay. And then in case that wasn't disintegration enough, at ninth level, you could just cast disintegrate as a six level spell. Um... This is like the pact of fuck a you. Uh, there we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you piss off the wand warlock, he could just be like, I'm tired of playing D&D. &D. And just like, everyone's... It's done. We're done. You're all disintegrated. And like, when peeps get disintegrated, I disintegrate all their equipment, too. Just so you know. I disintegrate all their equipment, too. Um, all right. Eldric Invocation. As your connection with your patron grows stronger, you are shaped, reshaped by Eldric power. Blah, 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 blah. All right. Um, gaining an invocation, you need to create a custom invocation. For example, follow these guidelines. Uh, invocation guidelines. Minimum level, uh, and then some tips. Don't be better than a first level spell. Don't gain proficiency in more than two skills. Gain a unique character passive, uh, changing passive feature. Uh, third level spell. Uh, second level spell at will. Fourth level spell once. Third level spell at will. Fifth level spell once. Got it. Spells are not always equal in power and utility. Use your goddamn brain when making a decision on that. All right. Common invocations. These invocations are available to all warlocks, regardless of patron, unless your patron would specify otherwise. Armor of Shadows. 
uh, Beast Speech, Beguiling Influence, Devil's Sight. These all sound familiar. Eldritch Sight, um, Eyes of the Runekeeper, uh, Fiendish Vigor. Uh, I think that would be very good in this very dangerous campaign. Gaze of Two Minds. You can use your action to touch a willing humanoid and perceive through their senses. Blah, blah, blah. Mask of Any Faces. Misty Visions. Uh, Otherworldly Leap. And Thief of Five Fates. Bane without using a spell slot. Ah, but you can only do it once per long rest. That's not great. Um, fifth level Invocations. Wait, are we missing anything? No, I guess we're not. Um, Mire the Mind. You can cast Slow without expending a spell slot. Uh, one with Shadows. When you're in an area of dim light or darkness. Happens often. Uh, also, Devil Sight in a system that does everything it can to nerf um, light. It seems like the standout champion, right? Uh, and then you combine that with one with Shadows. When you're in an area of dim light or darkness, you can use your action to become invisible. And then the Sign of Ill Omen... Cast Bestow Curse, Bewitching Whispers for Compulsion, Dreadful Word for Confusion, and Sculptor of Flesh for Polymorph. And then, ninth level Invocations, uh, Master These, Ascendant Step, Levitate at Will, Minions of Chaos, Conjure Elemental without expending a spell slot, you can't do so again, we'll see you finish Long Rest, and Whispers of the Grave, Speak with Dead at Will, that's pretty dope in my opinion. Um, so that's that. Huh. Warlock is a little weird. This supplement removes the wa the raw Eldritch Blast spell, replacing with a new variant gained through newly added Pact of the Wand. If you want to continue using the raw form of Eldritch Blast in your campaign, you can, however, just add Eldritch Blast back in, uh, restore all the Eldritch Blast-themed invocations, and get rid of Pact of the Wand. I would probably also say to use the Darker Dungeons caveat that Eldritch Blast cantrip only improves with warlock levels not with character levels i felt like that was a very smart change on their part i'm honestly okay with having a disintegration packed uh warlock i think that's pretty dope but then again i played a magic missile mage in hackmaster so i might be biased 